A Tennessee man continues fighting for his life after being struck by several bullets. But as investigators seemingly work their case, it would unearth clues leading to the arrest of his 23-year-old girlfriend. According to Memphis PD, their officers were dispatched to a local home shortly before 6.30 p.m. on August 22nd. It was there they found the man shot by several bullets and rushed him to the hospital in critical condition. Officials say the man's girlfriend was 23-year-old Maya Jansen. But Jansen isn't accused of shooting her boyfriend. Instead, authorities say she tried to get her boyfriend to kill her stepfather. According to reports, her stepfather received a notification while he was at a stalker game that Jansen was trying to enter his house. Her stepfather said he drove back home to immediately confront the 23-year-old. Once he got back at his house, the two reportedly got into an argument, which led to Jansen's stepfather allegedly hitting her in the leg. The argument seemingly heated Jansen to the point she called her boyfriend and told him she was assaulted. But Jansen didn't tell her boyfriend to call the police. Instead, she allegedly asked him to come over and kill her stepfather. When Jansen's boyfriend showed up at the home, both men got into a verbal argument that quickly escalated. And Jansen's boyfriend reportedly pulled out his gun. This prompted Jansen's stepfather to grab his gun for his own personal safety. I just want to thank everyone for always supporting our videos. And one of the reasons we're able to bring you all of this content is because of our sponsors like City Lips. As someone whose work is always on camera, I'm constantly having to touch up my makeup, especially reapply my lip gloss over and over again. And I really appreciate a glossy and plumpy look. So I turned to City Lips. City Lips is an all-in-one solution for dry lips, fine lines and wrinkles, and straw lines. It's formulated with clinically tested ingredients like hyaluronic acid for that perfect plumpy pout. And it's not just me who loves City Lips. Millions of women have tried them and the tubes are flying off the shelves. Snag one before it's too late and check out City Lips by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to citylips.com slash lcnews. Use the code LAW15 for 15% off. Again, that's code LAW15 for 15% off. The two's heated argument continued to escalate to the point Jansen's boyfriend fired shots at her stepfather, and he was grazed by one of the rounds. But police say Jansen's stepfather fired back, returning fire, hitting her boyfriend multiple times. The case could have taken an even more tragic turn. Two nearby cars were hit by the crossfire during the shootout, and one of the vehicles reportedly had a child inside at the time of the shooting. According to local outlets, both Maya Jansen and her stepfather were detained, but Jansen was later charged with facilitation of first-degree murder. It's unclear if her stepfather will face charges, but if Jansen's boyfriend survives his injuries, authorities say he's expected to be charged with attempted first-degree murder. Well, here to break down this case with me is Tennessee-based criminal defense attorney Don Bosch. Now, Don, thank you so much for joining me today. This case is pretty unusual in the sense we normally cover these types of murder plot stories. But in this one, what could have easily been a murder victim is able to defend themselves and fire back. What are your thoughts about this case? Well, the facts are a little bit interesting, but they certainly fit the crime that's been charged of the young woman that is charged over in the suburban Memphis area. Cordova, to be specific, where uh, she and apparently another individual, uh, what we would call a co-conspirator, uh, plotted to kill her stepfather. Uh, unfortunately, a, a gunfight ensued and the stepfather in appropriate self-defense uh, critically wounded the assailant. And it was later determined, obviously, by law enforcement that uh, the stepfather's stepdaughter, the individual charged, uh, was charged with soliciting, and that, that is asking somebody to commit a first-degree murder. So a little bit of unusual facts. Still more to play out in this case, I suspect. There could be additional charges, but certainly the root charge of solicitation to commit first-degree murder seems to be on its face appropriate given what we know today. And Maya Jansen, who allegedly called her boyfriend to come over to kill her stepfather, is charged with facilitation or solicitation of first-degree murder. Can you break down that charge for me, and how long could she face behind bars? Sure. So we have what lawyers in sort of common parlance call either Super A crimes or Class X crimes in Tennessee. Those carry a punishment of life with the possibility of parole, which means 51 years life without the possibility of parole, which means an individual will die in prison, and we still have the death penalty in Tennessee. So 
facilitation says that you drop the root level crime one level. So we've gone now from an X or super A, as some of us call it, to an A, which carries 15 to 25 years at nearly 100% service time. So there's no early release. There would be a determinate sentence should she be convicted of that crime. But say she received 20 years, she would do 20 years on that crime uh, as a class A felony. There may be other felonies coming behind this. I don't want to call this a placeholder. This may be the most serious felonies, but I still want to see how it plays out with her co-conspirator who was critically shot. She has some criminal culpability there too, and that's not been charged. Should she die, she could actually be charged with felony murder of her co-conspirator because in the attempt of a felony, somebody died as a result of her attempted felony. That is, the attempted killing of her stepdad, and she could be held criminally responsible for that death. So there are still some steps to go in this case, but as charged, she's looking at likely a range of 15 to 25 years if she does not have a substantial prior criminal history. And if the boyfriend does survive his injuries, you know, authorities say that he could also face that attempted first degree murder charge as well too. How long could he face behind bars? Sure. He would be looking at likely the same kind of sentence, assuming again, that his criminal history is not significant of somewhere between 15 and 25 years. It can range up all the way to 60 if somebody has a substantial felony record uh, behind them. But uh, as we sit here today, we're uncertain of their criminal histories. And do you think the boyfriend could end up turning on Maya Jansen and argue she persuaded him to come down to her stepfather's home and kill him and that he, in a way, might be a victim in all of this? Well, in 36 years as a criminal defense lawyer, I've never seen a situation that I've been surprised at when someone, quote, flips, turns state's evidence, turns government's evidence. So that is a distinct possibility. He clearly, should he survive, is facing attempted first degree murder. Uh, based, again, on the facts as we know them today. Also, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, an additional charge that would likely be consumed by one or the other with Maya, uh, the currently charged female. So he has a lot of criminal exposure uh, once uh, he is in a position to you know, make those decisions should he survive his injuries. And the state has the burden of proof. Do you think with what we know now, there's enough evidence to uphold the facilitation of first degree murder charge against Maya Jansen? Well, if I could predict a case after 48 to 72 hours of what I read in the media, I'd probably be the wealthiest defense lawyer on the planet. But certainly as reported, there seems to be sufficient facts to support a conviction, but it is very premature to make those kinds of uh, uh, predictions. And I always caution my colleagues and other pundits, uh, don't report what you know or what you think you know from the media. Uh, a thorough vetting of the facts needs to happen. And the state does have the burden, and they have to put that to a jury of 12 or reach an agreement with a defendant to plead to an appropriate charge. Do you think that prosecutors could get or could give Maya a plea deal in this case? Well, it's not unusual um, in any case. The system is so overburdened that uh, sometimes the parties do reach an agreement um, that uh, minimizes to some degree the exposure a defendant faces and saves the state resources and time in trying the case. Again, if this case plays out as the media is reporting today, the facts do seem pretty clear cut. This is a case, frankly, that absent the publicity aspect that might make getting a jury a little more difficult, should be able to be tried in a week to 10 days at the most, uh, even in a large jurisdiction like Shelby County in Memphis. All right, Don. Well, thank you so much for your insight into this case. Before we sign you off, is there anything else you would like to add? No, I just caution everybody. Let's let these facts play out. Um, it's easy to make judgment today with what we know. It certainly looks to be like a clear cut crime, but let's see what the other side of the story is before judgment is rendered. All right, Don, thank you again. We appreciate your time today. And also here to break down this case is criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Matt Mangino. Now, Matt, thank you so much for joining me. This case is pretty wild. What has been your reaction? And do you think it's possible the stepfather could face charges even though he defended himself in this case? 
Well, I would think at the outset that it's unlikely that the stepfather would face charges. Uh, you know, obviously he's being confronted with uh, someone who's uh, armed and shooting at him. And so, you know, he has the right to uh, defend himself. I mean, he's facing, you know, serious bodily injury or possible death. Uh, so he has the right to to protect himself with lethal force uh, because that's the same uh, level of force that's being used against him. And while it's unclear the full extent of his relationship with his stepdaughter, one thing that stood out to me was the alleged strike to the leg that kind of prompted her to call her boyfriend to come over to kill her stepfather. Do you think it's possible that was just a glimpse of potentially how volatile their relationship might have been? And I'm talking about the relationship between the defendant and her stepfather. Well, yeah, it, there's clearly, uh, you know, a, a volatile, as you uh, mentioned, relationship between the two of them. Uh, you know, as I understand, um, you know, the stepfather observed her trying to get into the house, you know, race back to the house because obviously he didn't want her in the house. And uh, then an argument uh, ensues and, you know, violence between the two of them uh, ensues as well. So, so obviously their relationship um, is a poor one uh, that involves, uh, you know, being at each other's throats and, and, and physically violent against one another. But what shocks me even more is that, you know, a girlfriend can call her boyfriend and say, hey, uh, come over here and kill my stepfather. And uh, boom, uh, he grabs a gun, jumps in the car and, and, and drives over and starts shooting. So uh, this is this is a, a, a strange dynamic in this family and the extended relationships. And if the boyfriend passes away from his injuries, could the stepfather or even Maya Jansen face murder charges? Well, I think Maya Jansen can face, you know, felony murder charges. Uh, you know, so, you know, what happens here is in the commission of a felony, uh, someone is killed, even though it's not actually the target of, of hers, that she wanted the stepfather killed, uh, her, if her boyfriend would die, she would be responsible for his death, uh, which is typically a second degree murder charge. Now, say he wakes up from his injuries and ends up being charged with attempted murder. What type of defenses are at play for him? Well, he's going to be charged, uh, obviously, if he survives. Uh, and and uh, I'm not, I know his condition was uh, serious or critical. I'm not sure if that's improved at this point. But he's, if he survives, he'll be charged. And he's going to be charged with, uh, at a minimum, attempted murder. I mean, he went there uh, on the orders of his girlfriend with the intent to kill the stepfather. Uh, so uh, he wasn't successful in that and ultimately got uh, critically wounded himself. But that's there's no justification uh, for that. And uh, ultimately, he's going to be charged with attempted murder. And Maya's pretty young. She's only 23 years old. But, you know, as we were just discussing, calling over her boyfriend to come over to kill her stepfather at his house is just brazen, irrational. It's very wild. Do you think that she might have interpreted this as something that may have not went to the extent and the level that it really did, where now she's charged with facilitation of first degree murder. Her boyfriend is um, in the hospital and her, um, you know, and her stepfather ends up shooting her boyfriend. Do you think that she may have thought when she called her boyfriend over that things might not have escalated to that point and maybe she just said these words again in the heat of the moment type of thing? Well, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and, and that might be something that she said, that she had no intent of him actually coming over. You know, she was upset. She was angry. Uh, she, she was just saying things that she really didn't mean, you know, sort of crying on her boyfriend's shoulder. He took it literally. You know, I, I don't know if that argument uh, works. I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, this is someone who, who, who calls uh, their boyfriend on the phone and says, don't, don't come over and help me. Don't come over and pick me up. Don't come over and protect me. Come over here, uh, allegedly come over here and kill my father or my stepfather. 
and he brings a gun with him and goes over there and fires the gun at the stepfather. I don't think there's any question what the intent was here, uh, if that's the case. Well, thank you again, Matt. I really appreciate your time with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. At this time, the status of Maya Jansen's boyfriend remains unclear, but Jansen remains behind bars held on a more than $100,000 bond. Reporting for Law & Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.